Hi everybody. How are you today? Oh, it's another great day in Washington, isn't it? So I hope you're doing well. I've been thinking about you a lot and we're going to start with our story this week and go through our packet and um, try to remember everything I need to tell you today. All right. Are you sitting crisscross? Are you ready to learn and ready to listen? Okay. Put your thinking, thinking skills on. Okay, here we go. All right, this week's story is Where Are My Animal Friends? And let's get this situated just right. All right, we have, this is our unit three, week six. These are our spelling words. We have faster, fastest, taller, tallest. Shorter, shortest, sadder, saddest, bigger, biggest. And if you look, I'll bet you can think about it and figure out what's similar about all of them. A couple things, this couple skills this week. So if you look at this column, they all add what two letters? E R, E R, E R, sadder, E R, bigger, E R. Now, fast, all they did was add E R. Taller, all they did was add E R. Shorter, they added E R. Now, watch sadder. Here's sad, and they added another consonant, D and ER, sadder. So there's two consonants right there. And bigger, the main word is big. They added another G and an ER. Now this column has the EST. Fastest, tallest, shortest, saddest, biggest. They all have EST. And you get down to saddest. Here's the main word, sad. S A D, add a D, and there's your E S T. It's easy, isn't it? Two tricky words: sad and bigger, sadder and bigger, saddest and biggest. Here's big, add a G and an E S T. So these three stay the same except for the ending. These two add another consonant. We have two high frequency words on this: goodbye and before. Of course, we have more. Now, this is something a friend gave me, something she's made up, and I think it's pretty handy and kind of pretty to have all of our spelling words and some of those other um, words we have. Um, here, I'm going to put this piece up. This one you're getting in your packet this week, and it's called a refrigerator copy. She also made this, my friend Katie, and... Um, so this one you can practice and has the story, Unit 3, Week 6. The story is, Where Are My Animal Friends? We're going to be drawing conclusions in this story. Here's our spelling words that we just went over. Here's our high-frequency words. And the two that were at the bottom is goodbye and before. So here's the six high-frequency words. Before, does, goodbye, oh, Right and won't. This is not the kind of right when we write a letter. This is the right or left or the right way. Our amazing words, autumn, bitterly, freeze, hibernate, migrate, temperature, and weary. I'll put weary in a sentence. I'll bet we are all weary of this stay-at-home stuff. We're just kind of tired of it. We're kind of over it. Can it go? Can it get better? Of course it can. Will it get better? Of course it will. Right now we're just a little weary of it, a little tired of it. So amazing words from our story. These words have to do with our story. May not be in the story, but they have to do with our story. And um, some of the questions I want you to think about before I start reading are, oh, hold on, yep, are, 
Who are the characters in the story? What does Bear do to get ready for winter? And how does Raccoon feel at the end of the play? And here's that what that looks like. There's the questions. It says assessment at the top. So you need to send that one back. Okay, and then we'll go over the rest of that in a minute. I do have one more question at the end of the story that we always do. This one I want you to think about while I'm reading. Where do animals go when the days turn cold? And that's the one you need to write about. Where do animals go when the days turn cold? Do they go the same place? Hmm. Get to listen to the story. All right, let me get this out of the way. Let me put my book up here. And I just want you to look at the colors. Maybe you remember this story from when we first got our book. And, um, of course, I love the colors and the illustration. I happen to really particularly like this illustrate these illustrations and the softness of it. It's in a, well, you could tell where it is, in a forest. The things you see in a forest. This is called a nurse log because it's a tree that's tipped over and there's things that are living on it so it's nurturing it it's called a nurse log and you can see all the other things in the forest oh how pretty and if you remember right you know what season this is and there are two words for this season one of them I love that word so much that I named my middle daughter. Her middle name is Autumn. And if you look back at our amazing words, here's the word Autumn. So it's the season fall. And the other word is Autumn. This one is written, so where are my animal friends? Written by William Chin, illustrated by Scott Gustafson. The genre is a drama or a play. Oh, we love those plays. Um, we've had some, a few of our students be in plays. We had Addie, Oliver, Wilson, and Lily going to be in Mary Poppins that I hope will happen next year. And so they get to do a lot of acting on stage that we've seen before. So this is a drama or a play that is acted out Next, you can read and then act out a play about animal friends who get ready for winter. And if we were all together, we would be doing that. So you could do it with your family, maybe. Question of the week. Another little fancy one. What do animals do when the seasons change? Think about different animals. What do we see in this illustration? Oh, we see a raccoon. Now, do you think this story is real or make-believe? Could it be real? Do animals really wear clothes? No. And since it's a play, I have a hunch they're going to be talking. So, here are the characters in the story. Oh, that was a clue to one of our questions. We have a raccoon. We have a goose. A bear a hummingbird, and a squirrel. And over here are their pictures, and that's who's going to be the talk, doing the talking when it's that turn. Okay? So, here we have raccoon and goose, and here they are. Here we go. Hello, goose. Why are you shivering? The f this forest is chilly, raccoon. The days are shorter now, and it's getting colder every day. Then we won't have much time to find our friends. You're right, raccoon. Let's look for Caterpillar. Caterpillar lives in this tree, but where are all the leaves? Many of them are on the ground. Where is Caterpillar? They're looking. Goose says, look, here comes the smallest bird in the forest. 
Hello, hummingbird. Have you seen caterpillar? And who's doing the talking? Caterpillar, or sorry, hummingbird. There's hummingbird. Look at that beak on hummingbird. Oh yes, caterpillar is right here. Raccoon says, that's not caterpillar. Caterpillar is long. This thing is not long. Goose says, our friend Caterpillar moves a lot. This thing does not move at all. Hummingbird says, but Caterpillar is inside. Then we won't see Caterpillar until spring when he'll be a butterfly. Now, do you remember from last week's story what this is? Do you remember it's called a chrysalis? And that chrysalis is hanging right there from that branch. And he's going to be there until spring. So he's going to, he's there in the fall. He'll stay there through winter. And then we'll see him in the spring. Raccoon says, well, I'm glad you will be here for the winter. Who says, oh no, Raccoon, I can't stay. I must fly away to where it is warm. Hummingbird must too. Yes, we must go. Oh, so Goose is leaving. Hummingbird is leaving. There he flies off. And Raccoon says, oh my, I am the saddest raccoon in the forest. Will you come back? Yes, we'll be back in the spring. Goodbye, Raccoon. Goodbye, Goose. Goodbye, Hummingbird. I will see if Bear is at home. Oh, look. Oh, my goodness. How fun. Hello, Bear. Hello, Raccoon. Is it spring yet? No, not yet. It will be winter before it is spring. Why are you sleeping? I ate and ate all summer. Now I am fatter than before, and I don't need to eat. I will sleep a long time. I won't budge until spring. Oh, no! All my friends are going away, Bear says. Pardon me, but I am sleepy. Good night, Raccoon. He's got his teddy bear. Raccoon says, good night, bear. But who will be my friend? Oh, here comes Squirrel. <laughs> Hello, Raccoon. Where is everyone? Goose flew away, and so did Hummingbird. We won't see Caterpillar until spring. And Bear is sleeping for the winter. Are you going away, too? <laughs> oh no, I will stay here all winter. I have a warm nest and lots of food. Will you play with me? Yes, squirrel. Let's race to the edge of the forest and back. Oh, they're two happy mammals right now, aren't they? Squirrel and raccoon. And here's a way that we could you could put on a play at home. You could make costumes, you could make props, and you could have an audience like your mom and dad. Or you could be doing this outside in the real forest because we live in the forest. How fun would that be? I wonder if you could find a chrysalis in the forest right now. Should be about time for them to start hatching. Maybe you could find a chrysalis. All right, and here's that last question. See all of our pictures. Pick which one you like. Beginning, the middle, and the end of the story with some details. Can you think about what they're saying? Okay, we're going to go back to page 198 and 199. Where do animals go when the days turn cold? And of course, that's what I'm going to want you to write about. So, page 198, 199. All right, I'll read these two pages again. Where do, winter, where do animals go to get ready for winter? Raccoon says, well, I'm glad 
you'll be here for the winter. And Goose says, oh, no, raccoon, I can't stay. I must fly away to where it is warm. Hummingbird must, too. And Hummingbird says, yes, we must go. Raccoon says, oh, I'm the saddest raccoon in the forest. Will you come back? Goose says, yes, we'll be back in the spring. Goodbye, raccoon. Goodbye, Goose. Goodbye, Hummingbird. I will see if Bear is at home. So what, where do animals go when the days turn cold? Where are they going? What are they going to be doing? That's part of drawing conclusions. All right. So now let's look at our packet. Put this away. And our packet starts with my letter. Explains things for you and your parents. Okay. And the next page will be a checklist of all the things you need to do. Don't panic. It's okay. So you're going to listen to the story on the video. You just did that. You're going to do your worksheet. You're going to take a spelling test and do the reading assessment. So the reading assessment, I already said that this, if it says assessment at the top, you need to turn it back to me. Here are our familiar worksheets, doing our spelling words, some practice. Uh, look at the pictures, write list words that end with E-R and E-S-T. So the main word is short. This one is shorter. But this one is shortest. Here's fast and big. Then write list uh, a list word that rhymes with the underlying word. And remember, cross them out as you use them. Because it looks like this time you're going to use all ten of those words. Practice reading these stories. Remember, they work as a story. These sentences, they become little stories. Make them more interesting. Okay, the next worksheet. Same thing. We have our spelling words. You're going to write the list word that fits in the sentence. If it, Tad is the taller boy in our class or Tad is the tallest boy in our class. Which one makes sense? And make sure you spell it correctly over here. We have two high frequency words, goodbye and before. And so we will only use eight of the spelling words and two, the two high frequency words. Write a word that is the opposite of each word. So looking at these two words, what's opposite of after? What is the opposite of hello? All right, here is some practice for the high frequency words, all of them. Does, before, won't, write, goodbye, oh. Has a color code. And when you're done and you've colored it, oh, it'll be a beautiful butterfly. Here's just another fun one for practice. And one of our skills this week was to work on DGE at the end of words. DGE. And it says J. So let's look at some of those words. Wow. Down here, ridge, ledge, fudge, bridge, budge, lodge, judge, edge, and nudge. So that's one of our skills along with E-R and E-S-T is having words that have D-G-E in them. And D-G-E says J. So watch for those. And um, if you um, want, you could find, think about and brainstorm with your parents other words with D, G, E in them and see how many you can come up with. Okay, here's another fun one with those D, G, E words. Putting them in A, B, C order. And you know how to do that. So we'll just start real quick. Do we have any A words? Nope. Do we have any B words? Yes. So budge would be your first one. A, B, C, D words. E words. Oh, yes, there's edge. And go ahead and finish that. Okay, here's a fun one for favorite pets. Kind of like it's math too, so it's reading and math. So you get to make this graph. 
And here's the number of children. How many cats, how many dogs, how many fish, how many hamsters, and how many snakes. So read these, fill in your graph. It's That's a lot of fun too. All right, in a normal reading test, just that cover page. Then we have our high frequency words. I'll read the sentence and put the word in the sentence. You guys have gotten really good at that at doing it by yourself. And then our, so this one you turn back in. The assessment page you turn back in. And if you need help, have your parents read the question and you answer it. Here's another quick assessment. Just read this story. And uh, remember how I like to read it just for you to listen. And then read it and follow with your finger. So your parents could do that with you or you could read it by yourself. It's up to you. I wrote assessment on this, but I don't need this one back. Here is the assessment piece with all the questions that goes with the story you just read. Here's the directions for the writing, which is you're going to tell, we already looked at those pages. Where do animals go when the days turn cold? Use facts, facts from those pages or any of the thinking. Maybe it's something you already know. I'm sure some of you come up with things that you already know. Remember the sentence. I want three sentences. You need to have a capital letter and an ending mark. It needs to make sense. And you need to have finger spacing. So here is that piece. And didn't want you to forget to do a spelling test. So have your parents give you a spelling test on those spelling words that I showed you at the very beginning. There you go. More reading is following the directions. Circle the answer to each question. Here's some choices. Or here's the story. Here's the question. Here's the choices. Here is another story about fall, winter, spring, and summer. And that one's just for practice and learning and might help you with some of those other questions, especially that writing one. Here's a one minute timing. This is for fluency and accuracy. Just need to do a one minute timing on that and mark it. Go away and practice it. Come back and do another one minute timing and I'll bet you you've improved. Okay, so that's all of our reading work. And I'll put that aside. And now we have some math things to do. All right, and then I've got some fun stuff I want to share with you. So we just finished the reading part. Now we're going to do the math part. So this is a workplace like we would have in the classroom. You can just set up a little space at your table or something to work on this. So here's all the directions for your parents. Here's the sheet you're going to use for sorting. And then here's the sheet. Sorry, I'll do that again. Here's the sheet you're going to use for sorting. And here's your shape cards. So you can color those, cut them out on the dotted lines, and then put them in the sorting sheet in different ways. Just sort them any and every way you can. That would be awesome. All right, here are shape riddles and more. So here's all of our shapes. Here's a riddle, and then you get to draw the shape. And a shape riddles and more with story problems. So draw this. Remember to draw it, read it, draw it, solve it, write it, make an equation, and write it. Here's the place for the answer. And label. It's always great to label. All right, and here's another problem. And let's see, another practice one, getting you ready for second grade, um, more practice, fun with those shapes and those cards you just had, and here is the assessment. Okay, and I think you guys will be great on that. And again, another assessment page with the shapes. And here's the last sheet. And I gave you one last week of a building in Morton. I believe it was Spiffy's. This one is a building in Morton. It has the flag and it has this Jubilee guy. And think about where you would see this. I thought it was over by the Jubilee Park. And I'll give you a hint. 
I drove into Morton and boom, there it was right in front of me. So you know where Mrs. Kralchik lives. You know how I get into town. I see this every day. So color it, send it back. I want to make a, a city of Morton in the hallway. So think about where this could be. All right, so we have done reading, math, color the Jubilee guy and send him back. Now, here's a fun piece. I like to watch the other teacher's videos. So the other day I watched Mrs. Fagan's video about a Diamante, Diamante poem, Diamante. And so I made one. She said to do two opposites. And um, I did quilt and food because when you're quilting, when you're sewing, when you're hand quilting, you shouldn't be eating. So that's how I pick those. But some of the adjectives were similar. So I labeled it Diamante poem by Mrs. Kralchik, but down here I gave Mrs. Fagan the credit. This poem was inspired by watching Mrs. Fagan's video. So that's something fun you could do and work with your parents if they want to on that, or just have fun coming up with words about one of your favorite topics. Okay, then I also wrote a poem. This one is called a haiku. Trees in Haiku, a poem by Mrs. Kralchik. And this poem was inspired by watching Mrs. Fagan's video, April 14th, and illustration inspired by watching Miss McCulley's video about nature. So it says trees. That's my clock you hear. So I'm going to pause, and you're going to count how many times it gongs. Hold on. Get ready. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Guess what time it is? <laughs> you got it. All right, here's my poem. Trees. Trees tall, green, luscious. Evergreens reach for the sky. Forests, parks, hills, lakes. So I watched Mrs. Fagan's video about a haiku, and then I watched Miss McCulley, who's at the secondary school, and uh, she wants you to go out and sit for two minutes and then draw something that you see. And when most anywhere I go, I can see trees. If I go out on my porch, I see evergreens growing tall. So it was really nice and fun to do. So there you go. And that's the end. Oh, send me your poems. Wouldn't that be awesome? I'm going to put them in a book and we could all get to read your poems. That would be really fun. All right. One more thing before I go is guess what? Here's our book. Remember, it has a zebra, has this guy. They're on that piece of, on that transportation bus or train. And when I open it up, here's our stories. One, two, three, four, five, six. Where are my animal friends? Guess what? That's the end of this book. So now we get to say goodbye to this book and I'll get another one and we'll have new stories. So when I look at this one, we're done with book number three. I'll go and find book number four. I wish I had your help, but you're not there. And I find this interesting because every week we have a question of the week, but over here was the, the question for our whole book. And here's a cute little one. It says, what is changing in our world? And boy, isn't that true. Things have really changed in our world right now. And it's been interesting. It's been fun. It's been challenging. And um, right now it's turning spring and it's getting so beautiful. So what is changing in our world right now? Our education changed? Our teaching changed? And think about all of those things. There's good things. There's some not so good things. And what a beautiful illustration to go with that. So next week I'll introduce our new book and our new question of the book and our new question of the week. All right. Have a great week and get your work to me either virtually that means buy a picture or scan it 
on the computer or drop it in the box at school. I'm looking at all of those and getting those. I love it. And I will see you next week. Have a great time. I miss you. Take care. Bye.